Hey guys, it's GTO Technology, and it's been about two weeks, maybe even more, since I released my last coding tutorial. I promised one two weeks ago, and I never got to it. It was going to show you how to make a broadcast plugin, which would display a message every uh, set amount of seconds, and then, um, yeah, so it would just be an auto broadcaster. Uh, so I thought I'd go ahead and do that right now. It's going to have a few parts to it, just because it's 99 lines of code. So if you're if you're willing to take the challenge, then we'll do that. Um, so I just thought I'd give you a quick overview of what it, the actual coding will look like, and if you want to get a little head start and jump to a later episode, um, then you can go right on ahead and do that. So obviously we have our on disable, on enable, which we'll call a method called broadcast met uh, message, which will read from the file and uh, you know replace certain tags with chat colors to implement chat colors in an easier way uh, and of course the on command to disable and enable it and uh, restart it so let's go ahead and get started um, I'm gonna first update my bucket to one uh, 280 I think is the latest one I'm a little bit outdated so let's go ahead and do that go to bucket.org and I'm expecting that you know a little bit of knowledge in bucket and if you don't check out my previous video because you might find yourself lost later on in this one and a little bit frustrated so recommended build is sorry 1240 so right here in the recommended build box in bucket.com uh, just click on that the last one the most recommended and right here under build artifacts we're gonna right click craft bucket uh, snapshot.jar we're gonna download it and I want you to save it to your server folder now we're going to call it craftbucket.jar this time because as a user pointed out in one of my earlier videos craft bucket is different from bucket and right now we're using craft bucket so craftbucket.jar will be going in your server folder and if you need help on setting up a local server for testing uh, click the annotation right there alright so let's go ahead and save it here let's just go ahead and run our server one time Okay, <clears throat> sorry I was W getting some of the images from macromeme.com so I wouldn't have to save them to my computer myself. Uh, anyways, so go ahead and go to your server folder in terminal by using the cd command which is change directory and to launch <coughs> your server you're going to do <coughs> sorry, java uh, xmx flag 500 megabytes of ram so that's java-xmx500m-xms500m uh, <coughs> jar uh, jar which is minus jar sign dash jar uh, craft bucket dot jar and press the enter key and I'll start up uh, alright so now that it's done that I'm just going to go ahead and turn it off by using control C and now it's generated, of course, the plugins folder. So we'll have <coughs> a place to <coughs> save our finished product. I'm sorry about this coughing. I'll try to edit it out as much as I can. I still have a little bit of a cold left over. So let's go ahead and hop into the coding or the basic setup for our project. Go ahead and launch Eclipse, which can be downloaded from, I believe, eclipse.com. Uh, if you need help doing that, I can direct you to one of my other tutorials and it shows you how to download Eclipse, but again, you're supposed to have some knowledge in Java, so either you have Eclipse or NetBeans, most likely. Uh, if you have NetBeans, it's the same general concept that we'll be using in this video, it's just it'll be a little bit different of a layout. All right. And you saw those red lines because bucket.jar was just deleted, so it didn't know where to get all the imports, so just forget about that. I just quit Eclipse again. Try this again. Okay. Go to File, New, Java Project, and we're going to call this Broadcast. Press the Enter key to finish. And here we go, we got our new project. Let's go ahead and import bucket. So, Properties, right click on your project, go to Properties. 
Java build path, libraries, add external jars, go to your server folder and import craftbucket.jar. Press OK. There we go, it's imported. Uh, so now we're going to make our package and our cl main class. So right click src, new package, me.yourusername.broadcast um, with a capital V. Right click your new package and go to new and call class, go to class, call it broadcast with a capital V. All right, so we've got our broadcast.java, and we've got craft bucket imported, and we've got our package set up. So um, I guess we just go ahead and start importing. So let's go ahead and say extends Java plugin, because this will be a plugin for bucket. All right, so that's imported. And now it's going to tell us that we need an on enable and on disable. So let's go ahead and state our few variables, which will be our plugin variable. So instead of typing broadcast every time, we'll just type plugin. So here we go plugin. Um, our logger variable, so we don't have to type logger.getlogger Minecraft every time. Okay, so I should probably be reading this out to you guys since I do it. So that is the first line is public static broadcast plugin. Second line is public final logger with the capital L, lowercase l again for the next one, logger equals capital L logger dot lowercase g get capital L logger in parentheses and quotation marks Minecraft with a capital M. Of course this is a lot easier to follow if you're watching. Um, but I just figured I might as well read it out to you anyways. Okay, um, so we're going to go public static integer current line equals zero. So right here, this will be the current line that it is reading from our messages that we will be broadcasting. This will update by itself. Program will update and increment this and in D and I guess D increment decrement. I don't know. There must be a word for lowering the count. I guess we'll just say it'll increment the uh, line numbers until it reaches the last line number and then it will reset back to zero and it will repeat. So there we go. And we'll say public static integer TID equals zero. This will be the process ID of our broadcast because we will be scheduling a task that will repeat using the bucket scheduler and uh, each each thread is assigned an ID so that we can kill a repeating task by uh, using a certain command which will kill it use by identifying that ID. So next line is public static integer running equals one. So that means if the uh, broadcast plugin is enabled. Um, public static long interval equals 10 and that will be the amount of seconds between each message so okay now let's jump or create a few more lines and we'll say at override and we'll go ahead and state our on disable so public void on capital D disable parentheses empty opening curly bracket uh, so we got our on disable method plugin description file capital for each word PDF capital F file equals this dot get description with capital D. Uh, so I don't have to say capital every time. Uh, the general layout in Java is that the first word is lowercase and the second word is uppercase unless it's a type of uh, ob unless it's like the name of an object like public description file or logger or uh, the name of your plugin. Generally, it's uh, the property or whatever is a lowercase first letter, first word, and then the second and word and all the rest will be uppercase at the very beginning. So capitalize. So let's go ahead and import plugin description file. <coughs> we'll say this.logger.info PDF file. We'll get the name of our plugin. 
um, and we'll say so broadcast version we'll put a little string in there PDF file dot get version so we will be getting the version of our plugin is now disabled and semicolon or parentheses closing parentheses semicolon that's all we need for the on disable so let's just copy this whole method right here and paste it right beneath we'll replace on disable with on enable and we'll, we'll replace is now disabled with is now enabled so that saves us a few more minutes <coughs> right underneath this we're gonna skip down a few lines and we're gonna say TID so remember that variable we stated earlier we're gonna be changing its value from zero to this bucket we're gonna be getting the scheduler the ID of this repeating task that we will create this is uh, this might look a little bit messy but um it's really just the best way to do it so bucket dot get scheduler capital S dot schedule sync repeating task all one word of course lower first word is lowercase and the rest are uppercase um, or capitalize now within these parentheses you will see arg0 arg1 arg2 and arg3 uh, I was told by somebody that I don't <coughs> use the auto to assist enough so I'll be helping you guys do that um, at certain parts it is hard to keep up with it and sometimes you really just can't use it easily enough it's just easier just to type it out manually so we're gonna say this for the first argument press tab key and we're gonna say new runnable parentheses empty opening curly bracket enter key public void run empty parentheses open curly bracket try opening curly bracket and we're gonna identify the method that we will create later broadcast messages <coughs> and we will pass the variable which is the location of our message file so plugins dot broad slash broadcast no dot sorry mess slash messages dot txt so this will be where our messages will be located in a txt file under plugins broadcast so finish that off with a semicolon add a closing curly bracket say else opening curly bracket enter key or sorry not else say catch opening parentheses io exception e go and import io exception so let's review what we got here we gotta try and catch for an io exception which is when an error is thrown and it's how we will handle it <clears throat> in this case we won't do anything with the error except for just catch it if you don't catch an error it will crash your java plugin unfortunately so that's why we have to put that in there so it has a way of handling an error when it happens of course we won't have any errors because we will be doing this correctly but just in the slight chance that something goes wrong like you can't find the file like you accidentally deleted it or named it incorrectly we'll have a way of handling that okay so now as I said using the auto uh, well, the help feature that's built into this um, isn't as easy uh, when you're having to put something as big as this into one of the arguments so we're just going to double click argument 2 arg2 which is beneath uh, the catch we're going to say interval or we're going to say zero excuse me so we got tid equals bucket dot get scheduler dot schedule sync repeating task open parentheses this comma new runnable opening curly brackets public void run opening curly brackets try broadcast messages method uh, catch the error and then we say our next argument will be zero and the one after that which is argument three will be our interval the uh, zero right here is the delay between <coughs> uh, when the first time the task will be run so uh, if we want to say a high message every 20 seconds um this little zero right here if we put 10 there it would be after 10 seconds 
oh, 10 times 20, it would be after 10 seconds that we'd see the high message. So it just affects the delay between the first time the uh, task begins. So I just put this as zero because right as we reload or start up this plugin, we want to immediately start loading up these messages and not have a delay prior to that. It's like set timeout in JavaScript or sleep in PHP. Just determines the amount of time before the task actually starts. Um, times 20, there are 20 server ticks per second. So whatever time we enter in here in the interval is being entered or substituted in down here. And we're multiplying that by 20 so that we get 10 times 20, which is 200. And that equals uh, 10 seconds in Minecraft server time. Which generally 20 ticks in a server per second. It's a little bit confusing, but just go along with it. That's how servers work in Minecraft. So we're just going to finish this off with a semicolon. All right, so this concludes part one because it's been rather long. Um, be sure to check out part two, which will show you actually how to dive into the broadcast messages method, which will be where we actually start reading the lines from the TXT file and displaying them into the game um, and interacting with the scheduler. Uh, so what we can go over right now is that we've imported a few things that we need, our essentials. We've stated our uh, variables, which will be plugin variable, the logger variable, which is just used to dis display when uh, something is when the plugin is enabled and disabled. We've already set up a repeating task that reads or that uh, calls the broadcast messages method. Uh, and passes the location of the message file that it will be reading from over to the broadcast messages method. And we've said that it will be run uh, at the interval that we stated above every, se uh, every 10 seconds. So we say in the interval it will be every 10 seconds. And uh, down here, we're making sure that gets passed along. So you'll have to excuse me for my slurring. I am a little bit tired. But. Um, Stay tuned for episode 2, and it most likely is already uploaded, so if it is, check out the annotation at the end of this video. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe, rate, and comment if this helped, or if you have any questions, be sure to comment. Don't dislike it just yet, because I'm sure I'll be able to help you, so try not to get too frustrated, and of course, um, instead of having to wait for me to answer it, you can just review the video, because as you can see, the only error here is not having broadcast messages method which is uh, because we haven't added it in yet. So if you have any errors other than that, it's most likely a mistake uh, that you might have made, or I could have uh, explained something incorrectly. So just look at this code right here, and if you can't solve it, just ask the question, and I'll be sure to help as soon as I can. Thanks.